this video is a brief introduction to GraphQL. So what is GraphQL? There are two parts to the term GraphQL. QL stands for query language. GraphQL is a query language for reading and manipulating or mutating data in APIs. The first part, which is graph, denotes the data structure which is used to represent the application data. We'll discuss this at length a bit later in this video. To understand GraphQL fully, let's see how a REST API might be structured. Typically, data entities live on a bunch of URLs or endpoints on a server, for example, bloggers and blog posts. And to retrieve information about these data entities, we make several calls to these different endpoints. Now, there are two potential drawbacks here. Consider an example where we would like to know the posts written by a blogger. To get the information about a particular post, we would typically make a request to an endpoint, which looks something like this, the domain slash blog post slash ID. This would bring back information such as title, date, blogger ID, reviews, and so on. Now, if we wanted to get the blogger information about this post, we will take this blogger ID and make another request to a different endpoint such as slash blogger slash blogger ID. This will usually respond with name, age, bio, blog post IDs, and blog post IDs correspond to the different posts this author has written. So notice that we've made two calls already. Now, if we also wanted to get information about each of the posts that this blogger has written, and we have the list of blog post IDs, so I'm guessing that we could make subsequent requests to this endpoint with those IDs. So this is what we call underfetching. We may need loading data from multiple URLs since the data from each request is not sufficient or it's underfetched. On the flip side, we may only want a small subset of a data entity, but the rest endpoint responds with the full data payload. GraphQL attempts to solve the two problems listed here. Instead of multiple URLs, uh, GraphQL API has a single endpoint that typically ends in slash GraphQL. Now let's contrast the REST requests to a GraphQL query for the same information, which looks something like this. So here we have a GraphQL query. This is what they look like. And what we're doing is asking for a post with a particular ID. We want the title, date, reviews of that post, as well as the blogger. And from the blogger, we want name, age, bio, and the list of posts. And from each post, we want the ID and the title of that post. So all of this right here is just one request in GraphQL. And we're getting back all of that information and all of that related nested information from this one single HTTP request rather than sending several requests to get that information using RESTful design. And that's not all. What's more, if you don't want all of this information and you just want a subset, then you can be selective as to what you want returned to you. For example, we could just say, uh, we just want the title of the post, the name of the blogger, and the title of the blog post that that blogger has written. And we don't need to bloat the response with all the information that we do not need. Now let's also talk about how the application data is represented in GraphQL. That brings us to the first part of the term GraphQL, the graph. A graph is essentially a data structure that has nodes and the connection between two nodes denotes the relationship between them. GraphQL represents the business domain or the application data by using a schema. The schema itself is a graph. The nodes in this graph are the objects of the business domain, which go by the keyword type. Going back 
to our example and looking at its schema, the objects that we care about are a blog post and a blogger and the relationship between these. So the basic unit is a blog post that counts as a node within our application data graph. The blog post has a title, so we can add that as another node within our application data graph. Similarly, our bloggers have names, so we have another set of nodes that are bloggers, and they're associated with other nodes that are names. So essentially, by putting this together piece by piece, you can imagine that app data graph would look something like this, where you have a collection of blog posts, you have a collection of bloggers, the edges represent relationships between these two. The fields, ID, title, name, bio, are scalar fields that do not have any subfields, and they represent the leaves of the query tree. Now that we have the graph, you can imagine that our application operates on this graph. When we write a query in GraphQL, the result is a path in the graph, like this, going from the object node to its subtypes until we reach scalar types with no subfields. Now let's look at our original query again. This is a query that we could run against the app data graph that we just saw. Once the server resolves the query, it returns this query result. And here's what that looks like in terms of the application data graph. So how was this information extracted from the graph by the query? The GraphQL allows us to define a root query type which defines where a GraphQL query can start when traversing the app data graph. In our example, we start with a blog post node, which we've selected using its ID with the query field blog post ID 450912. Then the query traverses the graph by following the edges marked by each of the nested fields. For our query, it hops from blog post node to the node containing the string title of the post through the title field in the query. It also gets the blogger nodes by following the edges on the blog post that are labeled with the blogger field and gets blogger name. And then it gets all the blog posts that this blogger has written. And it chooses only the fields specified in the query and ignores the others. So GraphQL is essentially a query language that traverses the data graph to produce the result of the query. So we've seen the query types. A consumer may also want to manipulate data, in which case we implement a mutation type that defines how data can be modified on the API. To learn how to write a mutation query, you may refer to that particular video in this series. Behind the scenes, GraphQL provides a runtime that uses the schema for fulfilling the queries. Every field of a type maps to a resolver function that returns its value when queried. So this concludes our brief introduction to GraphQL. Thank you.